Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's time to wrap up 2023 and I want to show you my favorite art supplies for this year. I'll show you how I like to use them and what I have created with them. I want to quickly mention that since I live in Gothenburg in Sweden and we don't have any huge art supply stores like Jackson's here, so what I have access to might be a bit different from other parts of the world. But with that said, we do have a few very cozy art supply store and stationery shops around here. I especially love this place where they allow people to sit down and test out their simple sketchbooks and pens and markers and such. The first thing I want to show you is this Graph 600 mechanical pencil. I like that it feels slightly heavy here on the metal part. And it also has a little window here to indicate what lead you have inside, which is very handy because I always tend to forget. I love to use this one before adding ink or watercolor on top, that's why I use a 0.53H lead inside. It is very light and very easy to erase. But when I really feel like sketching with a pencil, I like to use this polychromo black colored pencil. I think it feels and looks much better than graphite pencil and it has a very smooth consistency but not too soft. And it doesn't make my hands dirty as much as graphite. I also like to combine it with this Caran d'Ache water soluble black crayon. This one can make a much darker black than the polychromal black pencil. I love that I can quickly put down a very wide range of values with this crayon. And I noticed that holding a crayon makes my gesture drawings look much more dynamic. Next we have this Faber-Castell eraser. I remember when I was a kid, I always wondered what would happen to erasers when they became so tiny. I used them so much this year for removing pencil marks on my watercolor paper. They were advertised as dust free, but I think what it meant was that the tiny shavings would stick together and roll into bigger pieces for easier cleanup. Now let's move to ink and fountain pens. I've tried a few different fountain pens this year, but I prefer these three because the line variations are very interesting and it feels almost like figure skating on paper. The first one I want to talk about is the Sailor Fude Nib fountain pen with 40 degree bent nib. I think it's a lot easier to control compared to the 55 degree nib from the same brand. The lines are very beautiful and very sophisticated looking. My only problem with this pen is that the ink can leave stains on the pen itself if you're not careful. It has happened to me before and I'm not sure if I can get rid of the stain completely. So if I could choose again, I probably wouldn't have chosen this white colored one. The next one I want to talk about is the Lamy Safari with their calligraphy nib in the size 1.1. I believe that Lamy Safari has always been a favorite among urban sketchers because it's lightweight, it's cheap and it's very convenient to change the nibs and to refill the ink. And it also feels so sturdy and practical in my hand. But what I love the most about this is the 1.1 calligraphy nib. I discovered it quite recently and I've been so obsessed with it. It somehow makes everything I draw a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and that boosts my confidence which makes my drawing get even better. I liked it so much that I just had to order their calligraphy nib in 1.5 as well. It works very much the same way, but it's a little bit wider and the lines are bolder. I think it would be very cool to combine these two in one drawing in the future. The ink I use the most this year is this pigment ink in the color sepia, but I think the color is a little bit too red for me. It almost feels like burnt sienna. So I use a water dropper to mix it together with this sketch ink in the color lily. It is a greenish brown color and it neutralizes the redness very well. I'm not sure if mixing different brands of ink is going to affect the light fastness, but so far I have no issues with it. 
The next one is my Schminke watercolor palette. It comes with 12 half pens, but I mostly bought it for the palette itself. It's not so often to see a white palette in this shape. I just love how it looks and I think the shape works better for me than the long regular palettes. When I first got this palette, it was a little bit uneven. So when I dip my brush into the pens, it will make an annoying sound. So I put some kneadable eraser on the bumps to stabilize it. And of course, I'll have to talk about these new watercolor paints I discovered this year. They are all very gorgeous artist quality paints. I can't really explain why I tend to reach for these paints when I paint watercolor, but I suppose it can be a personal thing. I will put all the paint information on the screen if you are interested, all except for this green that I mixed myself. It's made by mixing manganese blue hue and burgundy yellow ochre. Both paints are from Daniel Smith. I wanted a green that gives me the cold, frosty winter morning feeling, and this is just the right combination for it. Next, I'm going to show you three different watercolor papers. The first one is this cold pressed harmony paper by Hanne Mulle from Germany. I think this is one of their cheaper papers. It's not made of cotton, but it handles water very well. Here's a few paintings made with this paper. The second paper is also from Hanamule. This one is their Torsham paper. It says it's rough texture, but it feels more like cold press to me. And compared with Arches rough paper, it actually feels kind of smooth. What I love most about this paper is how bright white it is. It is very cool white. This is not a cotton paper either, but I haven't had any problem with it. It handles erasing, masking fluid, and wet on wet technique really well. So I really have nothing to complain about it. The last paper I want to show you is the Sounders Waterford 100% cotton high white paper in rough texture. I like that it's quite textured but not so rough on my fountain pen like artist paper can be. I tried this because one of my favorite artists mentioned Sounders Waterford in her book and I just had to buy one to try it for myself. I got a very big block of this paper on discount and then I cut the paper and made them into two small sketchbooks. I'm very excited to use them next year. I have heard some artists say that they don't prefer this paper because the texture can be a bit repetitive like you can clearly see a pattern especially if you use granulating paints. I personally don't mind this effect. I think it gives a noise filter look but if you don't want this in your work I would recommend their cold press paper instead. It is also a really fabulous paper. I love how different colors can blend so smoothly on it. Next, we're going to talk about brushes. These two flat brushes from Casa Neo Da Vinci, they have been my go-to brushes for this year. I'm sure that I have finished entire painting with just these two. I love that they hold so much water, but at the same time, I can use the sharp edge to define some details.
I think they even changed the way I paint a little bit. Instead of always wetting the paper first, I don't mind to start with a very juicy dripping brush and let the water do its thing. And I will add some different color and let them play together. It looks very abstract in the beginning, but slowly something is going to tell me maybe I can add some foliage here or a window there. And this has become my new favorite way of painting imaginary shop fronts. Even if it doesn't always look right in the end, but it does help me to get to know my paint and have a lot of fun. The last thing on my list is Sennelier oil pastels. I've been wanting to get these for so long after watching Emily Hughes painting portraits with them on her channel. And I think Han also mentioned that oil pastels are somehow a little bit similar to gouache. I think after that, I just binge watched all the oil pastel videos here on YouTube and I ordered a 48 color set for myself for Christmas. But right now, I only have these 10 colors and I am already in love with them. I will make a review and swatching video about them next year, but today I just want to paint a little Christmas tree and wish you all a Merry Christmas. This year I will be working on Christmas, so I won't be able to make more videos, but I do have so many ideas and I look forward to share them with you in the next year. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who watched and liked and commented on my previous video. It really means the world and warms my heart. Thank you so much and I will see you soon. Bye bye.